Okay, fundamental types of crystalline solids. Um, so this is giving us an overview. Um, we've got crystalline solids. We can divide those into categories, I believe we talked about these already, of what is the individual particle, right? So we divide them into three groups based on the, the kind of particle. So we have molecular solids. These have molecules as their individual units. Um, ionic solids have ions, and atomic solids have atoms, right? Um, atomic solids, we're going to uh, categorize based on what are the forces that are holding them together. So we can have a non-bonding atomic solid. There are no actual chemical bonds. These are just held together by dispersion forces. So you can imagine that's going to have a pretty low melting point because dispersion forces are pretty weak. We can have metallic atomic solids. These are held together by metallic bonds. That's the electron C model, where all the atoms send an electron or two out to play, and that holds everything together. And then you can have a network covalent solid. Here the particles are, the atoms are held together by covalent bonds. These are essentially one giant molecule, literally, because all of the atoms are connected by covalent bonds. So these are going to have high melting points. What is solid xenon used for? Uh, solid xenon isn't really used for anything because it only occurs in an extremely low temperature. So, you know, just speculating, you would make it and then study it because it's interesting. But it's not really, it's not like you can make anything out of it. You could use it for stuff, but just, you know, crazy scientific stuff. So this is more details, and I'm not going to read all of these to you, because um, I kind of already talked about this. Molecular solids, you've got molecules as the individual particles. So what's holding the molecules together? Not bonds. Intermolecular forces. Okay, so the bonds are there. It has bonds, but those are within each molecule. You've got the covalent bonds. Between the molecules holding them together are those intermolecular forces that we just learned about. Dispersion forces, dipole-dipole forces, hydrogen bonding. Okay, so molecular solids tend to have fairly low melting points. And those are, that's a generalization. Um, some molecular solids can crystallize into different structures. When they form the solid, their molecules can arrange themselves in different packing um, strategies, right? So these are called polymorphs. So they can have there are many, many shapes, right? So different polymorphs can have different melting points, different solubilities. The other properties may be different as well. The crystals may look different. So this example, you're looking at that like, what, what the heck is that stuff? That's actually chocolate. Um, so cocoa butter crystallizes, forms a, a crystalline solid. But exactly how it arranges itself depends on the temperature. And so this is why making of chocolate is, is kind of an art. And you can have crappy chocolate or you can have good chocolate made out of the same ingredients. It's all in how you put the chocolate together. And so you can read more about that in the, um, in the textbook. But there's, there's actually six different polymorphs of cocoa butter. And they have different textures. And this is the one you want, number five. It's going to be firm. It's going to you know, snap, have a smooth, shiny surface. It'll melt in your mouth. And, the, and it's the best chocolate. If you get this one, it's too hard. Sorry, this number six, the one I can't point to. Um, that's going to take on, it has some different characteristics. That's when you get this white stuff that's called bloom. It's not dangerous. It's not mold or anything, but it's not considered desirable. That might not form immediately, but after a while it will. Um, and these other ones are going to have um, also have some blooming, and some of these are going to melt in your hand. 
And so that's not desirable because you, you, know, you take the chocolate bar out of the wrapper and it gets all messy, and people don't like that. Right? So you would have to heat up the chocolate at a certain temperature? Yeah, so they, they, you have to heat the chocolate and cool it in a very specific way to get the correct polymorph. Yeah. I just think that's interesting. I like chocolate. Um, ionic solids, you've got individual ions. We're going to talk more about this later, so skip over that. Atomic solids. You've got atoms. Um, so non-bonding atomic solids, just held together by dispersion forces. The only examples of non-bonding atomic solids are noble gases in their solid form. So you got to get them pretty cold. Uh, xenon melts at minus 112 degrees Celsius. Uh, argon melts at minus 189. So those are examples of non-bonding atomic solids. So, you know, that's, those are weird. Just held together by dispersion forces. Metallic, these are very common. Um, you've got a metal. It's going to have a crystalline structure. Um, these form strong bonds because these uh, metals, that's what they are. <laughs> These metallic bonds are in all directions. And so you hit the metal, and it doesn't just shatter, it dents. And so that has to do with the uh, characteristics of metal. But different metals will pack together in different unit cells. Network covalent solids, again, these are basically giant molecules. Um, examples, diamond. So a diamond is just carbon atoms, but the carbon atoms are covalently bonded together, and that's why it is so hard, right? You can scratch glass with a diamond. Graphite is also carbon, and the carbon atoms are bonded to each other, but in a different way, and so it forms layers, and it's slippery. Silicon dioxide, which is a main component of sand, um, is also a network covalent solid. It's silicon and oxygen atoms covalently bonded together. Um, these do not form closest pack structures because they're constrained by their bond angles. So you have to consider the electron geometry around each atom. That restricts what sorts of structures it can form. These have very high melting points because the covalent bonds are strong. Okay, so what do you need to know? You should be able to answer questions like this. What type of atomic solid is gold? So let's go back and look at the table. Yes, the third one. So atomic solid is the third one. We've got non-bonding metallic, and network covalent. So what type is gold? Metallic. metallic. It's a metal, right? So it's going to be held together by metallic bonds. So it's a metallic atomic solid. Non-bonding, the only examples are noble gases. This isn't a noble gas. And so anything that's not a metal, not a noble gas, if it's an atomic solid, call it a network covalent. So of these three, which would you expect to have the highest melting point? A. a. That's correct. So how do you think about this? Well, this is an ionic compound, right? Metal and nonmetal. So that's going to be held together in a crystalline lattice with attractions between plus 2 and minus 2 atoms, ions in all directions. Ionic bonds are very strong. Iodine, this is a molecule, right? As a solid, it's going to be a molecular solid. What holds molecules together, not as molecules, but together as a solid? Intermolecular forces. Are those strong? Not so much. And then what about krypton? That's atomic, right? And so that's just dispersion forces holding it together. And so that's not going to be the highest melting point. Any questions?